All right, thank you all so much for, for joining us um, for Anthony's dissertation. I, I think you may be able to tell by the number of people who are in the room and on the Zoom, Anthony um, means a lot to us. Um, he's, he's made an indelible mark, you know, kind of on our department theme and um, on the med school in this past seven years. And, you know, we're gonna have, try to have a little bit of fun today. If you know Anthony, you know he's all about work and he's all about jokes. So we're gonna try to make it a little bit fun and lighthearted, but I don't want any of that to take away from the fact that he has been a spectacular PhD student. He defines excellence with his work. He has been so productive. And I, he, he was the, the first graduate student to, to kind of come through the lab. And I can't think of a better person to kind of build a solid foundation um, for the work that, that we'd like to do over 20, 30 years than Anthony. He, a, a lot of what I think I'm gonna be able to do um, in my career is in large part gonna be because of the foundation he laid. So we're gonna have some fun. Um, if I get anything wrong in the history of Anthony Jones, somebody please, you know, let me know. Don't be shy. Um, you know, we kind of want to make this both, you know, a traditional um, academic kind of experience and rite of passage, but also keep it authentic to Anthony. So um, and with that, I think we'll we'll get started. Um, also, we have a lot of fun um, in our group. I like to think that we can, um, you know, do good work and also like have a good time. Um, so there's going to be some obscure jokes in here. A lot of them just have an audience of one of one. Um, so I'm just warning you, if something, if you're like, that's not funny, it's probably not, but I hope it's funny uh, to Anthony. Speaking of, the title of my talk today is Anthony Jones, PhD dissertation event. My first slide is, who is Anthony Jones? <laughs> so Anthony used to start all his slides when he first started. <laughs> Um, all right, so so I had the, the great privilege of being able to, to talk to Ebony, to be able to talk to, um, to Valerie, his mom, um, about, you know, what Anthony was like growing up, you know, try to get some photos, try to learn a little bit more about this person that I've been working with for four years. Um, and after doing so, I realized I made a very big mistake, which was that I should have done this the, day, the first day he ever walked into the lab. Because um, I wanted to try to figure out, I'm like, okay, who is this man that's like been working with me for so closely for so long? And what was he like growing up? And I came to realize that it was the exact same person. That Anthony at like 30 something, 30 whatever years old is the same person as like Anthony at 30 days. Um, and I feel like we could have been here maybe six months, maybe a year earlier. Um, I could have had a lot more hair and a lot of the stuff that I have could have been a little bit more black and less gray, like if I would have known some of these things. Um, so what was Anthony like growing up? So Anthony was born October 4th, 1989, same day as Rich Homie Kwan. Um, but it comes in California on the other side of the country. Um, if there's anything that defines Anthony, it's that he is hardworking. And so I asked him, like I was asking him about, you know, where does this work ethic come from? And he takes zero credit for it. And I had this up with his uh, baby picture, I think when he was seven days old. And because he was already hardworking then, because he told me that it was a gene that was carried on from birth. He said he can't uh, remember his mom not working. He can't remember his mom not having two jobs and that continues to this day. Um, and I just want you to know you can see that in your son. He is, I mean, as you know, right? You call him and he's always in the lab. He's always grinding. He's always, he's always trying to hustle and get there. Um, and Anthony tells me that like, he'll call his mom every once in a while and he'll say, are you working? And you know what the response is? Am I working? Am I up? If I'm up, I'm working. And so that's definitely passed on that that's gotta be something in the DNA. Um, and I've just, I've been the, the, the benefit of it. So thank you so much for passing on such a good example to Anthony. Um, Anthony wouldn't tell me a lot about his dad, just that he was very well respected. And one story <laughs> that I can tell you though, comes from Anthony's childhood, where uh, this is him, you can tell, looking, looking very happy and smiley, as he always does his pictures. <laughs> um, and so the story behind this uh, was that, um, so um, his mom shared the photo with me, and she said that, you know, Anthony was in a suit and refused to get out of the car and refused to take a picture. There's nothing she could do to get him to take the picture. So she said, okay, you don't get out of the car to take the photo, I'm calling your dad. Anthony promptly gets out of the car and says, I will take the photo, but I'm not smiling. <laughs> and again, that continues to this day. <laughs> so what else defines Anthony? Um, as many of you, I, hopefully those of you on his committee or those of you who have, who have worked with him, um, know that he kind of, he, he really gives everything to his work and I think you can define his kind of professional um, capacity as excellence, and these are not my words, but with a smart mouth. <laughs> <laughs> 
So going to the excellence part, I just want to make sure that everybody who, who's coming in um, to visit knows just how outstanding of a graduate career Anthony's had. Um, in terms of authorships or co-authorships, he's already has 12 peer-reviewed manuscripts. Um, there's four that are actively under review and three to five that should be submitted by the time he leaves the lab. So that's going to be a, a good 20. That, that's an excellent postdoc, much less um, graduate school. So Anthony has just been, I mean, we talked about his work ethic before. He's really kind of like put this, put this into practice. Um, again, I wish, you know, everyone in academia wants to think that like everyone comes in as unmolded clay and then just leaves as like the David statue, you know, but, but that's with Anthony, it's clearly not the case. It started from a very young age. So this is young Anthony already, um, already into the martial arts. Um, his mom told me a story about how when he was going up for his first, um, I don't know, whatever, like showcase, like for his, you know, kind of first, uh, um, I don't know, whatever belt it was, um, Anthony asked to go last. And so she thought it was because he was gonna be really nervous, right? That like, oh, I don't wanna go, I just wanna to try to get the nerves out. Nope, everyone's just supposed to break one board. So then he comes up at the end, he just asks for two. And so they're like, all right, this is a little bit advanced, like not really um, what we're supposed to be doing. They get two boards, flying sidekick, cuts them both. Um, so already he was a little bit um, precocious. Um, I asked Anthony what his report cards were like. And he said, quote, A's but talks too much every single time. <laughs> this might be really surprising to some of you. I don't know. Anthony talks too much. Go figure. Um, about, this, is the, this is the best five word summary that I think you can have about Anthony. A's but talks too much. I think my letter of reference is just going to be that. <laughs> A's but talks too much. Um, so I, I can tell you at least present day how this kind of uh, continues, which is. Uh, most people, when they come in, like new people to the lab, some of the undergraduates who are here can attest to, you know, you walk in and your first meeting with Anthony is not, um, hi, my name is Anthony Jones, it's nice to meet you. Usually what happens is like, you're, I'm, me or somebody else is working with somebody, Anthony will be walking by and he'll overhear something where I say like, oh, like, good job on the calculations. And Anthony will be like, I did my calculations, right? Nobody said anything to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be showing somebody something that I have shown Anthony Dozens of times, right? He'll be like, hmm, must be nice having somebody show you how to do it. I'm just grinding here in the back alone. <laughs> and so I think, you know, I'm starting to get some of these stories. Like I know he's, he's very like kind of um, positive affirmation based. And I think I know, I, I may be able to draw a thread for where some of that comes from. Because he told me, um, you know, when he was younger, he'd always be bringing back A's. And he told me he would really, really look forward to bringing home his report card, having A's, and then out would come a $20 bill. And everybody would take his report card around, and for every day, he'd get a $20 bill. Until Anthony started doing too well in school, and it got pretty expensive. <laughs> a $20 bill each time. So um, I feel like he also told me another story about when he, I don't know if it was like high school, um, but his, uh, his football coach thought he wasn't given enough effort, right, on the defensive line. So he said, for every sack you get, I will get you a box of sweet potato pies. And then Anthony just magically like turns it on. It's like, okay, gets four sacks, right? <laughs> so I, you know, I've started to, to kind of realize this and I maybe realized it a little bit too late, but because Anthony's very like reward uh, based, I have up here $38.95, which is the inflation adjusted amount from 1995 of $20. <laughs> and, like, for your dissertation defense, you will get a $20 bill with <laughs> So another thing that, that we absolutely love about having Anthony in the lab is that he is an excellent teacher. Everybody, I think, who's, who's in my group can attest to the fact that Anthony has sat down and taught them something. Um, probably while he was in the middle of doing something himself, he puts it on hold and he sits down and, and he, he teaches somebody, um, you know, what to do. Um, this it, it's pretty remarkable. So all of these four pictures are about things that are about um, concepts that are completely different, whether it's bioenergetics. Ataxy, um, just kind of helping people with undergraduate chemistry. Um, whenever I come back in my lab, it, it's always very gratifying to kind of see the whiteboard just filled, you know, right with uh, right with marks. Um, and again, like most academics, you know, thinking that like this is solely because of me, um, I was like, oh, this is, you know, it's nice that I could leave a good example for Anthony. Nope, this started a long time ago. So how did Anthony become such a good teacher? So he told me that he learned how to read because his paternal grandmother would have him in the car with her, with her, and then from every street between Westchester and Carson, she'd just point out and she would say, what's that street sign? 
and he would learn how to read just by reading all the street signs all around Los Angeles. And you know, I, I've taken classes in um, you know how to teach you know things like like uh, repetition, and there, there's all of these um, you know different techniques like progressive disclosure and all you know to, to use. And I've seen Anthony like use them in the lab, and I was like, wow, this is like really you know like like this man really knows what he's doing. And it all came from, you know, probably from a lot of people in this room, but I think some of the foundations were laid just by driving around Los Angeles with his grandma and like him being forced to read every single street sign. <laughs> Anybody who's met Anthony also knows he's the most literal person you've ever met in your entire life. Um, we have had a lot of, of discussions on um, text and subtext, and it's been really fun to, to see how he's um, been able to grow. So I have two quick stories. For, for some reason, Microsoft PowerPoint always seems to come up whenever I think about um, my, my stories with Anthony, and I feel like we're, we're both getting a little bit um, triggered here just even seeing the logo. <laughs> <laughs> we're here to work together. Um, but I, I have two stories. So when I first started working with him, it was we had so many communication problems. Um, and, and it was because I, I, I take full responsibility for it, and it's because I used to be like really indirect, right? So we'd, we'd go over a PowerPoint slide deck, and I'd say, you know, in my experience, I think people understand this better this way. Um, or I'd say something like, you know, if it were me, I'd do it this way. And I realized what was happening in Anthony's head the whole time was like, oh, glad you're not me. Glad I'm not you. <laughs> um, that's nice that this is your experience, but this is how I'm going to do it. Um, and a big breakthrough came again, like, like, like all good things. Um, a big breakthrough came. Um, when I figured out how his mom would deal with some of this stuff. And I learned a phrase from her through Anthony, which was, quote, I paid the cost to be the boss. <laughs> and I don't know, maybe I came up with you know, some of this like kind of new, new agey type or, or modern stuff where like you need to get people to buy in to you know, get them to do things and you want them to trust you and this and that. And I feel like, nope, it's just, all right, when you have your own lab, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> um, the, the, the second thing, in, in terms of being a, a literal thinker, I think really kind of shows um, his growth, and, and it was really uh, meaningful for me. So this was one of the very early PowerPoint presentations uh, Anthony gave, and I remember there was like a, a Q and A, and um, somebody asked him like it was a pretty open-ended question, but one that I knew he had the answer to, uh, and he's like, "Oh, do you think I don't know X Y Z?" And he says, "I don't know." And that's it. And all the PIs in here are probably, you know, like me, you're just kind of, you know, your blood's boiling a little bit underneath your skin, where it's like, not just like, I don't know is not, I mean, I don't know is a perfectly acceptable answer, but should be followed by, here's what I do know, right? Um, so we get back and we, you know, we start talking and I'm like, what was that? Like, you knew the answer. Um, and he's like, I legitimately don't know. And he went to tell me all the different caveats, right? Like the five or six things. He's like, oh, it could, like this could maybe explain it, but not really because I did this experiment. And this could maybe explain it, but not really because I did this experiment. And first of all, that made my job really easy, but it made Anthony's job really hard because what we talked about was like, all right, if this is, if this is gonna work, we're gonna have to find a way to get everything that's like up here. How do you be comfortable with getting everything that's up here kind of out here? And, and you know, working with Anthony, I. I really come to appreciate how um, you know difficult sometimes that can be. How you know at times you know this can you know these can be kind of you know un unwelcoming kind of places and how difficult that can be. But he's made so much progress, and I think you can see just by everybody here how much everybody cares for him that he has done such a good job and been really brave by letting everybody. By, I mean, it takes a lot of vulnerability sometimes to do this, right? Because you can be wrong, um, you know, you can mess up, and he's just done such a good job. Uh, going through that process that I just, I, I can't be more proud. But again, thankfully, he's been literal his whole life. So I like this photo up here. Um, and again, Ms. Jones gave me this, um, and this was school picture day. Um, you can see Anthony with this trademark backwards uh, Clippers hat. <laughs> and so they told him to take off the hat. They're like, it's picture day, take off the hat. And he said, nope, the instruction said, wear this shirt, right? Wear this sweater, wear these pants, I am wearing the shirts. Uh, whatever, the shirt, the sweater, and the pants, nothing in here doesn't say anything about a hat. <laughs> and so we get the hat on for picture day. So again, most, those of you who want to like chat with him and congratulate him, most literal person in the world I've ever met. Choose your words carefully. Um, okay, so then we go to, there's someone, if everyone could mute themselves on Zoom, I'm sorry. I'm now that guy, right? To tell everyone to mute themselves on Zoom. Um, all right, so let's go back to the timeline. Um, so now we are we are graduating from South Bay Lutheran High School. We've got a little bit of a we're gonna take a little bit of 
detours here, right? Anthony will go to, to Capital University. Um, told me that I, I could say this, and I think it's very like illustrative. Anthony's own words, quote, failed chemistry twice with capital X. Um, the reasons don't, don't need to, um, you know, go into, but what I, the, the reason I'm bringing it up is because, I mean, Anthony's gonna graduate with 20 papers for his PhD. And there are some really instructive lessons in here about drive and determination, and it really doesn't matter where you start, but it matters where you finish, okay? I mean, this, this man, I mean, we can go back to the teaching slides. This man failed general chemistry twice, and is now gonna get a PhD in pharmacology from a top flight institution, and I just, it, it's just fantastic. And I think those, what's clear is that there's always just this inherent drive um, in him. And that has served him very well, because Anthony, I'm gonna warn you, because these are all the hypotheses that we had about his project that were wrong. Okay? <laughs> Anthony had a very open-ended PhD project. I mean, his his goal wasn't just to you know um, you know follow like a rubric. Like if you, it's, it's not like time served or anything. You know, it's like I gave him a very open-ended question. I said, figure out what this does, and he did it. And there were a lot of like ups and downs. Um, I've got like screenshots from talks where like, yep, we figured it out. Hey, you give us this money, and we figured it out. Hey, can you buy this for me? I think I figured it out. None of them were right, right? But he just, he, he pushed through it and he is determined and he made it. So everything turned around for Anthony at what he's told me is called uh, JSC. So some of you might know it as LA Southwest College. Um, Anthony likes to refer to it as the homeland of the Joneses and the Sullivans, or as we now shall refer to it in perpetuity, Jones and Sullivan College. So this is here, this is Anthony up here at, um, obviously at JSC, and he did a summer research um, experience for an undergraduate at CSLA, which Anthony describes as fire. Um, <laughs> so he, obviously, um, so he, what, what did he do, right? This man who's, who's studying like, like cancer biology, what did he do? He um, looked at um, water and sediment samples in Biona Creek, so he's been a chemist. Um, this is gonna be a theme, like he's been a chemist kind of his, his early educational life. Um, and one story I really like from this time, um, that I think reflects some of his, his current, um, you know, his current experience at UCLA is that he's always been incredibly selfless and giving. I mean, Anthony will, um, I very selfishly like relied on Anthony for a lot of our equipment and like instrumentation. Um, a lot of times like something will break and I'll be like, all right, we got to get somebody in to fix it. He's like, no, you don't need to. And he'll come in with like a wrench or something and he'll just, he'll just fix it on the cheap. Um, but he's also just giving in his time. Like one thing I think many of you know, there's nothing more than Anthony likes or not many things than like watching a fight on Saturday night. And he has left big fights multiple times to come to lab to help people who are struggling or help equipments that break or freezers that break or something. And he's just a very selfless and giving person. Um, and Ebony told me a story um, that, that I thought was, was just really illustrative of this. So when, when they were in school, um, she was having a really tough time in statistics. And Anthony wasn't taking statistics, he was all chemistry all the way. So my man learned statistics just to be able to help her, and she got an A. Okay, so now we're, we're, we're kind of on the upswing. We're at uh, Cal State Dominguez Hills. Um, he's doing a summer undergrad research fellowship um, at Caltech. And uh, one thing that I think that um, kind of best defines Anthony too is his independence, and what I've called determined in quotes. Um, some of you may experience this in other ways. Um, in academia, they teach you a lot of euphemisms, so I like determined. Um, so we're gonna play a little game here, which is Anthony at Dominguez Hills joined the chemistry lab that did surface plasma, surface plasma resonance with Fourier transform infrared spectroscopy. Uh, very hardcore super chemistry, it's as complicated as it sounds. Um, but what, anybody who doesn't know the answer, do you know what Anthony actually did in the lab? Yeah. Of course, I mean, if you're gonna go to like such a hardcore chemistry lab, you are going to do Natural products. So he shows up in this lab, right? Where the guy's like, I do infrared spectroscopy, and Anthony's like, that's cool, I do natural products. <laughs> so he's like buying no polycactus powder off of eBay with his own money and just sitting there like doing um, isolations. I, I do want to, to point out the fact, and I, I was remiss um, a little bit before, but, but throughout some of this period, you know, in high school, um, kind of going through college, um, and I'll bring it up later, but Anthony has had fantastic mentors throughout. And if I'm not mistaken, his high school uh, principal, Miss um, Starr, I don't know if she's, she is here. I believe so, there she is. So she deserves a round of applause. Um, I'm sorry, I should have done this for me. We need to go back because um, when Anthony was in high school, she saw something in him that I think we all kind of 
um, see today, and it's really special people that can um, see that like small spark um, in people and really kind of nurture that. And so she wrote uh, Anthony a letter personally to go to her, her alma mater of Capital University, and I hope you can take some pride um, in, in today as well. I mean, with that, I, I, from hearing Anthony tell the story, um, without for you, without but for you and a lot of other people in the room, this wouldn't be happening today. So thank you so much for everything, and I'm sorry I had to go a little bit backwards. All right, so now we are at Anthony going to a hardcore chemistry lab and just buying stuff off the internet <laughs> and doing things that like the supervisor has absolutely no experience in. Um, but he found other you know mentors when he was at um, you know CSLA and at, at Cal State Dominguez Hills. I know some uh, some people are you know here on the Zoom. I believe Dr. Salas is here um, today. There she is. Thank you. Thank you so much for everything the, um, that you've done. Um, so this kind of let's say determination to study you know what you want to do I think kind of persists um, persists today um, all right so now we're gonna play another little game which is when Anthony joined our lab what did we want to study I, I had these beautiful designs of what I wanted to do with my group you know I wanted to study neurons and pancreatic beta cell mitochondria is very important in them had all of these designs I get this you know Harvey tells me there's a really bright student you know that's coming he's gonna be a great person to build a foundation for your lab um, like past always uh, kind of defines prologue. Anthony says, nah, I do cancer. Um, <laughs> so like, all right, we gotta find, figure out some sort of way to work this out. Um, but what I put up here in all of the images are four things that I have no experience in. But Anthony, just through his doggedness and determination, um, convinced me that he could gain enough expertise in it so that it would relieve a little bit of my burden for being able to, to supervise things. You know, it's really hard to, to be able to supervise stuff that you yourself aren't an expert in. And a lot of it relies on, you know, the student themselves to be able to, to make sure that they've figured out where all of the potholes are. And Anthony's definitely done that. All right, so we're almost done here. You guys aren't here to see me, you're here to see Anthony. Um, but the last three kind of characteristics about Anthony <laughs> is he is fun. I hope everybody knows just how much fun we have in the lab. This is one of those stupid slides that's only going to make sense to Anthony. Um, and I was like, I don't even know how to encapsulate all the jokes we've had over four years. And so I just went through my text messages for the past couple months. And I'm like, oh, I should just send all of the gifs, right? And I learned a couple things. One of them is that I'm the only one sending gifs. So I have to apologize, because I, I feel like this is some two-way relationship. And Anthony's probably just at home, just being like, oh man, I got another one in <laughs> But, but it, it's, it's, we have a lot of fun, and like this one here on the top left is my personal favorite. Um, some of you may know, that, that this may be known to about 25% of you, um, but I can send Anthony this text, and he knows that the question that I'm asking is whether or not we're running the mass spectrometer in selected ion monitoring mode, or whether or not we're just doing a full scan. And I know, but, but a little pump in, um, I don't know whatever he calls himself these days, and sparkling in still water, like, it, it works. Um, this isn't even from a text, but Anthony's had a lot of lower leg problems recently. Just like, <laughs> just like Greg Jennings, he can break his leg and put the team on his back. <laughs> so we have fun, but Anthony also has fun with a lot of a lot of other people. Um, and one of the things, just from the outside looking in at his relationships with everybody at the university, is that it's a really special thing because he will always find a way to like find a connection point with somebody. Right, so regardless of you know who it is that comes through the lab or who it is that, that you know he's he's working with, he will. I, I think it's a special skill actually to not say have this person come to me, but try to figure out all right where is the intersection of, of our two personalities that we can work together. And it's really it's it's a fantastic skill to have, and you can you can just tell by by the support and the, the love we have for him in the room. Um, finally, I know a lot of you you know might think you know that that this this talk may be. Um, you know, maybe not in keeping with all of the conversations that we've had about Anthony's graduate school. And that is true, Anthony is also authentic. I feel like I have to be authentic here. So <laughs> one, of his, one of his favorite sayings is, it be like that sometimes. And I love it, and I think I'm the first person to ever use that phrase in Hershey Hall. Um, <laughs> and it be good like that sometimes. <laughs> But it also be challenging like that sometimes. <laughs> and then these are these are emojis that are deliberately just for me and Anthony. Some of the challenges that we've had together, been able to, to make it through. I can at least do the one on the top left. I've never met a man who can buy a piece of electronics and then a week later, like the battery is dead. Like if you walk around our lab, there's just like eight different cords everywhere. And he'll come in, she's like, hey, my computer's dead. Can we use yours? I'm like, what? <laughs> one of the photos on here is really funny where he's like teaching. There are literally like two empty cords just hanging around. So it's like, plug your phone in. Um, 
so that is all for me. I know, I know you're here to, um, to see Anthony. Um, I, I don't want to take too much time, but um, one thing I do want to say is, I mean, this has been a lot of hard work from Anthony, but I, I hope I was able to show how many mentors he's also had along the way. I mean, whether it's from everybody here and his family, you know, his, his mom um, coming through with, uh, you know, Miss Starr and, and, and Miss Solace. Um, Harvey has been instrumental in just making sure that Anthony was taken care of, um, you know, in the graduate program and would kind of see it through. Um, one person I didn't mention who's gonna give a toast later today is Sean Bailey. I can't, I don't know where Sean is um, right now, but, but Sean, I, I got to reap a lot of the rewards that, that, um, of Sean's work with Anthony. Um, he was, when Anthony was in a, a previous lab, um, Sean kind of took him under his wing, both as a, as a scientist and also as just a, a general kind of um, mentor. And I'm, I, I didn't want to say too much because I know that um, I, I wanted Sean to be able to have the opportunity to talk about his experience with Anthony. Um, but I think, um, yeah, we're, we are just so incredibly proud of him. I always knew Anthony would graduate. He had so much drive, um, worked so hard, um, but it, it may have been a question about how he was going to graduate. Is this just going to be brute force through my man's going to make it? Or are things going to really click and he's just going to take off with flying colors? And it has been the second. And you don't get many, you don't get many chances in life to really like kind of sit back and, um, you know, let things sink in. And just, you know, being able to see all these pictures, like, I, I don't know, sometimes I feel like I'm in my curve. Like, I, I'm kind of done for. If you just think about where Anthony was, like, just think about yourself where you were 20 years ago, 15, 10 years ago, even five, and now, like, my man is just on the upswing, and the world is his oyster, and it's going to, you're going to outgrow this place really soon, but um, I'll squeeze a little bit more work out of you before, uh, <laughs> you do. So with that, Anthony Jim. All right, thanks, Ajit, for uh, that interesting <laughs> uh, introduction, and wow, thank everybody for being here. There's still, there's still a lot of people over here. <laughs> but um, today, I want to talk about how well, the title of my talk is My 88 Single <laughs> Augments Alternative Macrophage Activation. Um, you know, seriously, before I give um, some of the data, I just wanted to give a background. So macrophages are uh, innate immune cells, and they're responsible for carrying out a wide variety of functions. So they're responsible for everything from detecting and killing foreign pathogens to presenting antigens to T cells and all cell secreted cytokines at the site of infection. So how does a macrophage, which is a single cell, execute such a wide uh, variety of functions, right? It has to kill a bacteria, but it also has to kill a virus. So it turns out that uh, macrophages can sense different external cues, and in response to these external cues, it can activate very specific genetic programs. So I have that kind of illustrated here, where you have a macrophage, and it can sense a cue that's in red, and it, after that, it can execute this function, or it can sense a different external cue that's in blue and execute a different function altogether. Now, two examples of that are classical activation and alternative activation. So classical activation is um, seen in bacterial and viral immunity, and alternative activation is mostly encountered during anti-helminth immunity and allergy. So the way we can activate macrophages uh, in vitro to the classically activated state is by polarizing them with LPS, with or without interferon. And these macrophages are characterized by the presence of the co-stimulatory ligands on the cell surface, and they also express uh, pro-inflammatory cytokines such as IL-1 beta, TNF-alpha, and, uh, and IL-12 and IL-6. But on the flip side, if you polarize macrophages with IL-4 to induce the alternative activation uh, program, you see an increase in CD206 and CD301 on the cell surface, and you also see increased expression of MRC1 and MGL2 genes. So why are we a metabolism lab uh, interested in macrophage polarization? Well, it turns out that during macrophage polarization, there are these coordinated changes in metabolism, right? So during, uh, when you stimulate the macrophages to the, uh, with LPS or interferon gamma, what you see is increased glycolysis, reduced oxidative phosphorylation, and the mitochondria are repurposed as signaling organelles. Thanks, Harvey, always coming through. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so then when you have the, uh, when you polarize them with IL-4 to the alternative activation state, you see increases in oxidative phosphorylation, uh, enhanced mitochondrial biogenesis, and increased fatty acid uptake, and also fatty acid oxidation. 
So today I'm just gonna talk about alternatively activated macrophages. And first I just wanna give some data about what I've said about um, after the IL-4 polarization, there's increased fatty acid uptake and fatty acid oxidation. So here's a study from 2017. And basically what it shows is that following IL-4 uh, exposure, BMDMs are able to increase fatty acid oxidation. So naturally people ask, well, if fatty acid oxidation is uh, enhanced during the anti-inflammatory response, if we inhibit FAO, do we decrease the IL-4 response? So to do this, people use this drug, Edamoxier, and Edamoxier works by inhibiting one of the rate-limiting enzymes, rate-determining enzymes in fatty acid oxidation called CPT1. So Again, what they did was polarize macrophages alone with IL-4, and you can see here are the expression of these two markers that I talked about before, CD206 and CD301. And after you give the macrophages IL-4, there's an increase in the double positive presence of these macrophages. So it goes from one to 24. And then if you polarize them in the presence of IL-4 plus EDO, you see actually it is decreased. So this was interesting because it showed that this drug, which inhibits fatty acid oxidation, decreases the IL-4 response. However, there were some data in the field that suggested that maybe Edamoxia was working by an off-target effect. And so we decided to, study, decided to study this a little bit more. One thing we know about, uh, one thing we know about Edamoxia is that it forms a, a, a CoA, and this is what is used to efficiently inhibit CPT1. So we hypothesized that, we hypothesized that um, Ebony Walker just kind of threw me off. Uh, <laughs> uh, we hypothesized that these excess, these very high doses of Edamoxia could deplete the intracellular coenzyme A levels. So what we did was run an LCMS uh, assay to determine the intracellular abundance of CoA. And we've seen indeed that Edamoxia, these high concentrations of Edamoxia were able to decrease the intracellular abundance of, of CoA. And we see the same thing that it was also able to decrease the IL-4 response. So what we hypothesize is that maybe if we supplemented the cells with CoA, we could rescue the IL-4 response. So we provided the cells with exogenous CoA. And again, you can see that we rescued the CoA level to, back to what it was normally. And we also, also rescued the Edamoxia effect. So uh, just to summarize that portion, I just showed you that disrupting coenzyme A homeostasis kind of decreases IL-4 polarization. So the next step was to determine if we augment CoA levels, do we enhance the IL-4 response? So basically, does CoA act as some kind of lever to control macrophage polarization or the alternative activation? So to answer that question, what I did was polarize macrophages with IL-4 alone or IL-4 in addition to CoA and looked at the expression of, the IL, of these IL-4 associated genes. And you can see that IL-4 increases the expression of these genes, and then CoA kind of further enhances it. You can see that in a variety of um, genes that are dependent on IL-4 signaling, like MGL2, RG1, the gene that encodes PDL2, and FIS1. So to follow that up, what I did was perform flow cytometry, and you can see at the, um, at the protein level, CoA enhances the abundance of CD206 and CD301 double positive macrophages. So not only do we see it at the gene expression level, but we also see it at the protein level. And so next what I wanted to do is see if these macrophages had some kind of increased effector function. So we know that CD206 is the mannose receptor. And so what I did was do a uh, mannose receptor activity assay. And you can see that IL-4 increases mannose receptor activity and that's further enhanced by CoA. Uh, lastly, we just wanted to see if this was true in vivo. So we polarized macrophages with IL-4 alone or IL-4 after six hour stimulation with CoA. And you can see even in vivo, CoA is able to enhance the IL-4 response. So kind of to summarize that, uh, CoA addition does enhance the IL-4 response both in vitro and in vivo. And uh, so the next question was always, what's the mechanism by which CoA enhances the IL-4 response, right? And so, uh, yeah, so CoA, a long time ago, Adik told me CoA is not a drug, it is a tool. So um, what we wanted to do was see if we could use CoA as a tool to try to understand the pathways that can be targeted to enhance or control macrophage activation in different pathologies, basically. 
So kind of to, to address what is the mechanism of CoA, um, we can circle back to something I told you guys about before, in that when macrophages are polarized with IL-4, we see these, um, these very distinctive metabolic changes. So like when the macrophages are in the anti-inflammatory state, they have increased respiratory capacity, which I talked about before, increased mitochondrial glucose oxidation, and also increased fatty acid synthesis. Well, that's pretty interesting because CoA is an essential cofactor for many of these processes. Processes. So naturally, what we assume was maybe CoA, addition of CoA was able to supplement and enhance one of these processes by basically um, entering, in set, entering the cell, becoming a part of the endogenous CoA pool, and relieving a rate limitation on one of these processes. That's how CoA, that's how we hypothesize that CoA was acting. So we decided to do um, assays to measure all these, plus or minus CoA, with IL-4 polarization, plus or minus CoA, and look at the results. Uh, it took me two years to do all this. I'm not gonna show you the data, but none of, these, none of those processes, oh, you can't see the gray here, but there are words here. Uh, none of these processes were actually increased by the addition of CoA. So that was two years of hard work, and I used to love showing that data, but it really, it really uh, wasn't really adding anything to the, it's not gonna add anything to the story. So because CoA didn't enhance these metabolic hallmarks of the IL-4 response, what we decided to do was kind of take a step back and use RNA-seq to see if we can better understand how CoA was enhancing alternative activation. And so uh, I just wanted to put this here just to remind you guys what the pro-inflammatory genes are and what the anti-inflammatory genes are. And so here's the RNA-seq data. And one of the first things I did when, one of the first things I wanted to check when I did RNA-seq was to determine if the assay was working correctly in my hands, right? So I polarized the macrophages with IL-4 or, um, yeah, with IL-4 and looked at a volcano plot and just to see if the anti-inflammatory genes that I expected to increase were increased and they, uh, they indeed were increased. But the interesting data is that when we look at macrophages that are supplemented with CoA, we see an increase in the alternative activation genes like um, PDL2 and SLCS1 but we see an increase in pro-inflammatory genes as well. So you can see like MX1 is up and IL-1 beta and IL-12 are also increased. So that was pretty interesting because not only was CoA enhancing the IL-4 response, but it was also increasing like pro-inflammatory markers. And when we performed gene set enrichment analysis, we've seen that many of the genes that were increased following CoA, CoA supplementation were actually involved in toll-like receptor signaling. So what I wondered was if CoA itself was able to induce a pro-inflammatory response. So to uh, answer that question, I polarized the macrophages with CoA alone, with, with not in the presence of IL-4, and measured the expression of pro-inflammatory genes. And you can see that just CoA by itself is able to increase the expression of IL-1 beta, TNF, uh, IRG1, and MX1. And because IRG1 is responsible for the for the, uh, for the production of the pro-inflammatory metabolite etaconate, we measure its production as well. And so CoA was able to induce all of these things. And I kind of further tested this in vivo, where we injected mice with CoA in the peritoneal cavity, and we've seen an increase in expression of those same uh, pro-inflammatory genes, and also there was increased IL-1 beta and TNF alpha in the uh, peritoneal cavity. So hopefully I demonstrated to you that CoA induces pro-inflammatory activation in vitro and in vivo. So what, what I next wanted to determine is which pattern recognition receptor was mediated in this response. So here's the data that uh, I showed before. And we know that MITE88 is an essential adapter protein for many of the pattern recognition receptors. So in fact, all of the uh, toll-like receptors except for TLR3 require MITE88 for its full, for full signaling capabilities. So what I wanted to do was use MITE88 knockout mice to see if we could decrease uh, CoA's ability to elicit a pro-inflammatory response. And so in the MITE88 knockout mice, you can see that CoA significantly decreased the expression of IL-1 beta and TNF alpha, but there was still some uh, basal level of expression still some basal level of expression of these uh, genes. So this kind of suggested to me that CoA was signaling through some pattern recognition receptor that had a MIT88 dependent role and a MIT88 independent role. And so what we did was do a uh, TLR agonist assay 
um, which is a proprietary assay where different TLRs are expressed on 293 T cells. And uh, these, these uh, cells don't have endogenous TLRs, so they're just ectopically expressed, and then you can check if your uh, compound in question activates one of these TLRs. And so basically, CoA was not able to increase the, ex the activate, CoA did not induce activation of TLR2 cells and TLR4 cells, but it actually uh, activated uh, the TLR4 cells. And when I interpolated the data, it turns out that CoA was equivalent to about 0.1 nanogram per mil LPS. And so this is just kind of quantified here. And so my next question was, it was seemed like this assay suggested that CoA was working by um, inducing TLR4 activation. So I wanted to see if this, if this was, if this effect could be diminished in TLR4 knockout, in TLR4 knockout uh, macrophages. So we treated the cells with CoA, the wild type and the TLR4 knockout cells with CoA. And we've seen that as usual, you know, it's able to induce a pro-inflammatory response, but this response is uh, decreased or not present in the TLR4 knockout cells. And you can also see the same thing in, um, in the endoconate levels. So here's a wild type, you know, treating the cell, the wild type cells with CoA increases the endoconate abundance, but it basically goes away in the TLR4 knockout. Okay, so now that I showed you that CoA is a TLR4 agonist and it also enhances the IL-4 response, the question is, can other TLR4 agonists also enhance the IL-4 response? And so to answer that question, what I did was polarize macrophages with IL-4 alone, or IL-4 in addition to LPS, which is a well-known TLR4 agonist. And you can see here on the uh, the the, uh, the flow plots that IL-4 induces the expression of the double positive population CD301 and CD206, and LPS further enhances that. So we know that LPS signals through both uh, the TRIF and the MITE88 pathway, so I figured that either one of these could be contributing to the enhancement of the IL-4 response, so I decided to um, use ligands that individually trigger these adaptive proteins to try to dissect the mechanism. So basically you can see that IL-4 plus PAM-3, which only signals through the MITE88 pathway, enhances the IL-4 response, while adding IL-4 with poly-IC decreases the expression of these IL-4 markers. So this kind of illustrates that MITE88 may be responsible for the enhancement of the IL-4 response. And so I validated that with uh, gene expression. These are just some of the anti-inflammatory genes that we talked about earlier, MGL2 and YM1, and you can see that LPS and PAM3 are both able to increase the expression of these genes, while poly-IC diminishes its expression. And this was followed by the same a CD206 activity assay, just um, the, same way, the same thing that I did with CoA. And um, next what I did was basically do this same assay, but in my 88 knockout cells, and you can see that this effect from LPS and PAM3 is um, is decreased, uh, yeah, is decreased in uh, my 88 knockout cells at the protein level and at the gene expression level. Okay, so then this led us to the question of do these TLR ligands boost alternative activation by altering uh, chromatin accessibility at these IL-4 dependent genes? So to answer this question, what we did was perform ATAC seq, and here is just a volcano plot where you can see that addition of PAM3 increases the chromatin accessibility at these uh, IL-4 associated genes. So you can see that with PAM3. You can also see that with LPS. And if we look at the gene tracks of these, of genes like PDL2 and SLCS1, you can see that there's increased chromatin accessibility after the addition of, of LPS or the addition of PAM3. And the last thing I wanted to do was prove that this effect was true, or the last thing we wanted to do, is prove that this effect was true in vivo. So we um, polarized, we injected the mice either with IL-4 alone, or IL-4 following addition, uh, or following after pretreatment with LPS or PAM-3. And you can see that IL-4, that IL-4 induces a proportion of CD206, CD301 cells, but this is further enhanced by LPS and also further enhanced by PAM3. 
but it is not enhanced with polyon C. So uh, in summary, CoA addition enhances the IL-4 response in vitro and in vivo. Um, CoA does not enhance alternative activation by, by um, like further augmenting metabolic hallmarks of the IL-4 response. And CoA is a TLR4 agonist, and it's able to induce pro-inflammatory activation both in vitro and in vivo. And lastly, my D88 signaling is sufficient to enhance the IL-4 response. So our future directions are to identify the transcription factor that mediates the synergy between IL-4 and MIDE88, and also to, uh, to follow up on that by genetically ablating this transcription factor and, and seeing if, if MIDE88's ability to enhance IL-4 response has been removed. Okay, so with that, just wanted to do uh, my academic acknowledgments. So I just wanted to just do like a brief acknowledgement slide where I thank all of my collaborators. So um, obviously everybody from our lab, I have slides for the lab later, but everybody from our lab, Lindsay, um, the lipidomics core, um, people who helped me in the Benzinger lab, and David for the CoA assays from the Ready lab, Allison Terry from the Reed lab for the, for the 293 T cells, and Nick from the Graeber Nathanson lab, and Jenna and Preston from the Goldstein Lab for help with a lot of the bioinformatics stuff, and of course my thesis committee. So, uh, yeah, thanks. I guess I'll take. necessary if you have like a TLR2 dependent response, you know what I mean, like a MIDE88 dependent response, where that's not as necessary if you have like a viral, like if you have a viral, uh, like a high viral load or something like that. I guess maybe that could be a reason that the cells are engineered that way. I don't have an answer to that. You know, it's a really interesting question as to yeah. why that would be. And you can imagine that things like, you know, COVID, which has such a barren inflammatory response, mm -hmm. It's not responding properly to these anti-inflammatory resolution cues, but yeah. it's something like this, right? Yeah, it's not I, an interesting idea. Yeah, that's true. I know also that like um, when we talk about like helminth infections, like I know some helminths can actually trigger TLR two. So like some of their products can take a, trigger TLR two. So maybe it's maybe that's necessary. You know, like that could be a reason why first you like why TLR two synergizes with IL four. But maybe this is not the case, you know, during um, like during viral infections. Maybe the the helmets don't trigger the viral infections. Can I do something obnoxious? I will second uh, the Rodney Rodney's question. Do you have like a like I didn't I, we didn't plan this or anything? Do you have like thirty seconds to maybe like broadly why this stuff's important or like kind of what you're doing just in, in general? Uh, it's like excellent like, what question. did you just say? <laughs> <laughs> excellent question. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so macrophages, I guess what I would say simply, uh, macrophages are important during infections. 
right? And so when we have infections like tapeworms and stuff, there are these particular set of macrophages called IL-4 associated macrophages. And we're just studying basically how they work. And what I showed was basically when you add TLR2, which is another uh, compound that enhances, macro it basically enhances the ability of these macrophages to work. That's what I said in, in one sentence. <laughs> <laughs> Second, second. <laughs> all right, uh, all right, cool. All right, put your time. All right, so uh, I wanted to thank many people. Uh, like, I have a whole list of people to thank. But first, I kind of want to thank the lab. Um, this are, these are a bunch of pictures of our lab through the years. Um, so this is us at this is us at Jin Tai Fung. I, yeah, this is us at Killer Noodle. Um, yeah, so here is like Kristen and Brandon are, are here, Kristen and Brandon are here. They were actually in the lab before I got in the lab. And so um, it's kind of, it's, yeah, it's cool. So they were there first, but then we kind of expanded. And then it was just me and Ajit. And I was like, Ajit, I need some people in here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, people that the top middle is Photoshop me in there? Like I don't just <laughs> So then Arcelli came to the lab, and then like now we now we have a huge lab I think because Marissa's there, Natalie's there, like um, Andrea's here. So this is just us through the years. Um, this is us. We went to go box. This is uh, yeah. G thought he was killing it that day. We <laughs> thought you were like you, man Anderson Silva that day. <laughs> but yeah, so thanks for everybody in the lab for the support. I, uh, I really appreciate it. It's definitely a, a cool place to work. Um, speaking about the lab, we got to talk about all the data that I presented is basically uh, basically done by the undergrad. <laughs> I just take like credit for it, basically. But um, so here are the uh, two first undergrads in the lab, uh, Angel and Amber. And then here are here's uh, Amy, who's in the lab now. And then here's Nira, too. And then them together, they're like, I call them the squad. That way I don't have to. Um, have to worry about any of their names. They don't have to write double initials on the reagents. They just write squad. <laughs> so uh, thank you guys for uh, for helping me with all the experiments. Definitely wanted to thank everybody in the uh, Shiri High Lab. I don't know where all these pictures are from. Also, it was like super hard to find pictures because I don't take a lot of pictures. So if I don't have a picture with you, we're not Facebook friends or somebody else couldn't send it to me. <laughs> so uh, yeah, this is uh, everybody in the Shiri High Lab again. So it's really cool to hang out with them. They do a lot of, like a lot of parties and stuff. I think this is my birthday actually. Yeah, this is my <laughs> and then this is, this is all my birthday. This is a birthday before that. I feel like I had to put the martini girls in here. Cause, I mean, why not? And then I had to put this picture of Lindsay. Before this presentation was built, I knew that I had to put this picture of Lindsay dressed up like Axl Rose. And this guy dressed up as Slash. Like, that was fire. <laughs> I wanted to thank people, uh, everybody on my committee. Uh, Steve, Rob, Tom, Tom's on Zoom, uh, Orion, and Heather. And of course, uh, I wanted to thank Ajit. So thank you guys for all your support. Uh, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a long road. It's been a good time and a long time. So it's, it's been really fun. But um, speaking of a Jeep, I, of course. <laughs> so I really just want to say three things. I, I, I swear, it's going to be short. Three things. So thank you for supporting me. It's been many times I needed your support, and you were always there. Facts. Right? Thank you for always leaning in. <laughs> fighting for me you know I like there's been times when I needed your help and you're always there um, helping me out like going to bat for me so good thank you good looking out um, all right so also uh, yeah it took a lot to get me here so I just want to thank some um, some other people so I want to thank Ms. star here she is this is actually high school high school graduation uh, so Miss star is here she was I feel like I had to put 
a picture of capital because you really like put your reputation on the line <laughs> when you send me out there. So <laughs> hopefully it's still in touch. <laughs> so thank you for all for all the support. This is uh, like us at uh, graduation, and then this is actually us at prom, and then this is just the other you know two other teachers in the at the high school. Um, I wanted to thank Dr. Salas and Dr. Moss because they really helped me out when I was at uh, Southwest. So it was really um, it was really instrumental time. Actually, these are probably two of the first doctors that I got to uh, interact with. So it was really it was really cool. They let me know that I could do it. So thank you guys both for um, putting up with me when I was at Southwest. And um, and also, this is uh, Dr. Salas let me try on her hat one day, like her, uh, her hat from her graduation. So she predicted this. <laughs> she predicted this, so that was cool. I found this. I, actually, you sent me this, huh? Yeah. All right, cool. Um, so then I just wanted to thank a couple people from Dominguez. I wanted to thank uh, Tigress and Obi, who every time I forgot to submit my pay stubs on time, they always um, helped me out. And, and uh, yeah, they always made sure I like could attend conferences and had money to travel. And here again, the Tigers again. And, and of course, uh, and I was in the lab with Dr. Rodriguez that Ajit was talking about. But of course, I wanted to thank Professor Belmont. Professor Belmont is the person that took me to my first conference. Like we drove in your Prius to my first conference, <laughs> and you helped me with um, with my poster. Uh, my computer's about to die. <laughs> <laughs> you guys on my side so it was um, you guys made changing lives easy it was really nice and thank you to uh, Dr. Reddick and uh, Johannes for letting me um, shadow them in the um, you know in pursuit of my of my uh, next adventure which is going to be medical school I hope and thanks for uh, to Dr. Nathanson for actually um, putting me in contact with like people like uh, Johannes all right, I want to give uh, another slide to the homies. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I, like I was saying, I had a hard time finding pictures, right? But the only person who kept, I had all these pictures with was DJ. And I was like, I don't even want pictures with DJ. You know what I mean? <laughs> but so uh, I met him when I was in, uh, in Ohio, so it was really cool. This is us, I would think I was like 17, right here. This is, I don't even know where we were. I'm not even clicked in. So then this is us on, I think this is like a Halloween. DJ brought all his old uniforms to, to college for some reason. He was on the basketball team. We all wore them. Doesn't make sense. Um, then that's where I met Darius too. So this is us doing uh, fireworks on 46th Street. And then this is us at the UC, USC tailgate. And then this is Preston and Jenna and Ebony. We were uh, 
playing poker because Ebony won the pot. She she made us take the picture. <laughs> so, um, thanks. They actually started out as collaborators from um, for Andrew Goldstein's lab, but now I think they're more like my my friends. And then I had to put a picture uh, here of Mike, but um, yeah, just big ups big ups to Mike was my uh, kickboxing coach. So I also wanted to thank uh, the members of my of my family. So. I feel like these two pictures right here, like, have almost everybody. Like, this is like this is like baby Jamal right here. Like, baby Jamal holding Asia, and then Jermaine, my brother, or which, which one is it? Jermaine, my brother, and my other brother, Jamar. Um, so Jamar was here. Oh, Jamar is here. Jamar, I wanted to thank. Uh, oh yeah, thank you, Jamar, for showing up. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so then this is Daryl and Grandmommy. This is uh, Richard and Jermaine in the slums of Botswana, <laughs> aka that house that's on 46 Street on the corner. <laughs> so I had to get a picture with uh, Jamar. You can mute yourself now. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Uh, so then I had a picture of all the people from the Jones side. So Derek is here, and um, a bunch of other people. Here's my dad. Then I have a picture of Rosie, my personal chauffeur. <laughs> when I wasn't driving to uh, school, Rosie used to always take me back and forth to Dominguez, and and it, it was like without Rosie, I couldn't have, I couldn't have got there. You were always Where? on time, Rosie. Where? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Rosie, thank you for always taking me places. Thank you for always picking me up on time. <laughs> when I was 15 minutes late, you weren't uh, you weren't tripping. <laughs> um, I wanted to put a picture of here with Nana. Nana's the one who made me uh, read the street signs everywhere, uh, everywhere we went. And then here's a picture of my dad and pops and uh, and Derek in the back. And I had to get a picture of Rodney. It's the only picture I could find of you. <laughs> 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 my little brother wasn't born yet. So. <laughs> okay, here's all of us right here. So here we are when I graduated from Cal State Dominguez Hills. You can see that? Yeah. yeah. All right. And then here are the bad times. So this is me, my dad, and then this is my little brother, and then this is me. <laughs> and then here we are. This is my dad, my little brother, and me. Luda. <laughs> and then this is us at my my um my elementary graduation. And so this picture, when I seen this picture, I don't know where I don't know where this picture is from, but I was like, this is a rare event right here. Yeah. Cause this is like Poppy is smiling. <laughs> <laughs> you are smiling, Pops is smiling. This is Wedding like day. Huh? This is Wedding Wedding day. Day. Uh, this is fire. Like this is <laughs> This is awesome. I wanted to include that picture. So, Ma, thanks for everything. Wuda is a uh, cactus. Huh? Cactus in the background. Oh, I don't know. Okay. So, uh, yeah, thanks, thanks, uh, Mom, for supporting my lifestyle. Thanks for always uh, hooking me up with my allowance. Like, thank you for <laughs> supporting me, Jermaine. Thanks for always being supportive of um, just uh, everything. Like, anytime I need to move, you always there to help me move. You know, Buddha, Buddha is a legit, the only person I can call on the phone and be like, what's up? And he'd be like, nothing. And I'd be like, all right, what's up? Like, and we just keep talking. Like, everybody else I got to call for a purpose. Buddha is the only person I could be like, what's up, man? And he's like, nothing. I'm like, all right, cool. What you do today? Like, just, we can just talk for hours about nothing. And kind of last but not least, of course, I have to thank Ebony. So uh, I could have put up a thousand pictures, but I figured out, I figured I only needed really three. Because here is us in 2007 at prom. Here is us in 2022 at uh, Eden dinner, and basically all that equals is 15 years worth of laugh 
laughs, loves, and support. So I want to thank you for always being supportive of me and sticking with me for uh, 15 years. I'm sure that uh, this is the way you wanted me to to show these pictures. But <laughs> the way that I think about it is here's Ebony. <laughs> in 2007, here's Ebony. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, all right, thank you. Thank all you guys for coming.